We have a 10 Investigate special report for you tonight. A dangerous chemical found in butter flavoring has sickened and killed hundreds of factory workers around the country. The government has known about this link for 10 years now. So why has nothing been done to regulate it? Anitra Hamper conducted a six-month investigation into the hazards of this chemical for workers and potentially consumers. Anitra? Yeah, Jerry, this investigation all started when I learned that hundreds of new lawsuits were pending for workers. Turns out, while the government is aware of this chemical, there are still no rules or regulations regarding it. As a result, the lives of workers all around the country and workers in central Ohio have been drastically impacted. They said I had lungs of an 85-year-old woman. I uh, can't get air like I used to, uh, just performing a simple task. It, it causes me to lose my breath. I have to sleep propped up all the time. I cough constantly. Uh, just exhausted all the time. Cynthia White Rhodes, Rocky Klein, and Delea and Ed Hawkins have all been diagnosed with a potentially fatal lung disease called bronchiolitis obliterans. The other commonality they share is they were all factory workers at the Marion ConAgra plant making butter-flavored microwave popcorn. They are so sick, none of them can work. <coughs> you cough all the time. Government researchers have confirmed that they all developed the rare lung disease from their exposure to a chemical called diacetyl. They are among hundreds of workers around the country that suffer from the disease known as popcorn lung. Attorney Ken McLean represents these workers who have all resolved their lawsuits. He says nationwide, these kinds of lawsuits have resulted in more than $100 million in verdicts and settlements. It's a widespread problem, but it's, it, this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of, uh, of other workers who are potentially ill. The chemical diacetyl is used to make butter flavoring. It is the vapor produced during the heating and mixing of diacetyl, which makes it toxic. The discovery was made in 2000 by the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH, when dozens of workers from a Jasper, Missouri popcorn plant became sick. NIOSH testing determined a link between diacetyl and bronchiolitis obliterans. Their findings were documented in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2002. Because everybody was sick, coughing, nosebleeds, skin irritations, eye irritations. Delea Hawkins began to wonder if this same chemical was making workers in Marion sick. They weren't required to wear any protection while working around this chemical. As far as like um, wearing a mask or anything to protect our self from breathing anything there was there was nothing like that and we actually did ask for a breathing mask at one time you did yeah and what did they say they were too expensive in fact, the only thing they were required to wear was a hairnet. NIOSH investigators came to Marion in 2003 and determined that these workers were, in fact, being harmed by this chemical. After recommendations, ConAgra implemented safety changes almost immediately that included providing respiratory masks to workers and overhauling the plant's ventilation system. Diacetyl, which is often mixed in slurry rooms like this one, is sometimes only contained by vinyl curtains. We asked to visit several plants, including ConAgra, but we could not get in. So we went to NIOSH labs in Cincinnati to see for ourselves in this chemical-free simulation how quickly the vapors can permeate throughout a plant without proper ventilation. No one knows how much exposure it takes to make workers sick. The NIOSH research has shown that some workers have become ill after a very short amount of time uh, being exposed to these chemicals. After dozens of lawsuits by workers and questions from consumers, Cotta Agri Foods made a voluntary, company-wide decision to stop using diacetyl in its microwave popcorn. Despite mounting evidence of the negative health effects on workers, other companies still use diacetyl because they can. OSHA has never instituted regulations for the chemical, and efforts to push for standards have fallen on deaf ears for a decade. In 2006, two prominent labor unions petitioned OSHA to issue temporary standards for diacetyl. In 2007, the U.S. House passed legislation supported by the flavor industry to issue interim emergency standards. The bill died in the Senate. That same year, OSHA announced a program requiring inspections of plants that use diacetyl. But with no regulations, all it can do is compile data. 
Now, in 2010, there's still no standards and no regulation, meaning even though workers use some safety protection, they have no way of knowing if it's effective enough. 10TV went to OSHA to find out why it has taken so long to implement standards for diacetyl. Officials there declined an on-camera interview, but say OSHA is developing a proposed rule and analyses to address occupational exposure. And last year, they established a small business advocacy review panel to help in that process. But are those efforts going anywhere? 10TV took the issue to Senator Sherrod Brown in November. He sits on the Senate Committee for Health, Education, Labor and Pensions, which oversees matters of occupational and public health. I think that, that OSHA needs to move quickly. I, I think that's the most important thing, that OSHA steps in, sets the rule, moves forward, enforces it, and makes sure that, that the workers uh, the workers are protected. A day after our interview, Senator Brown sent this letter to the U.S. Department of Labor Secretary Hilda Solis asking the agency to proceed with a sense of urgency. Within weeks, OSHA established its 2010 agenda. Citing Senator Brown's interest, the agency has added diacetyl standards to their priority list for the coming year, saying that OSHA will work aggressively to complete these required steps. In the meantime, lawsuits continue, lives are changing, and workers are dying. Many of these workers are on lung transplant lists. Some have received lung transplants. It's not a very uh, promising uh, future for people once your lungs become in this kind of situation. A fate these workers wouldn't wish on anyone. We need to get this stopped. They need to do away with this flavor. <clears throat> Now, the workers I spoke to said they had no idea this chemical was still allowed to be used. Now, workers in other industries are even coming forward with lawsuits. Bakery workers and professional chefs, all who come into contact with those diacetyl vapors. What about consumers? And it's an obvious question, and that's one that we asked. And in this investigation, we have uncovered a number of consumers that actually have been diagnosed with this same disease that has only ever been seen in workers. And so we asked the questions, too, to the, the researchers and the government. If we don't know how long it takes for someone to get sick from this exposure, what about long-term exposure for consumers? So we went to Washington this week. We talked to the lawmakers, and we are going to show you tomorrow night at 6 what is being done. And I can tell you this, something is being done now. Great so job. we'll bring that to you tomorrow night to talk about the consumers.